13. Here I read verse 4. The Bible says, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed on the farm. But one mockers and adulterers, God will judge. Marriage is honorable in all. In Matthew chapter 19, Matthew 19, in Matthew 19, I read verses 3. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. As a result, they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement, and to put her away? If what you are saying now is what God will have us to do, why did Moses tell us or ask us or permit us that we can give a writing of divorcement and then let her go away? Jesus replied, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, he allowed you to do so. But from the beginning of creation, it was not so. It's because you will not listen to him. You will not do what God expected you to do. That's why he permitted you to do so. And they said, and I say unto you, whatever Moses has said before, listen to me now. Whosoever shall put away his wife, Except it be for fornication, and shall marry another committed adultery, and whoso married her which is put away, doth commit adultery. The disciple said unto him, If the case of a man be that way, be so with his wife, it is better one not get married. But Jesus said, all men cannot receive this, saying, Save they to whom it is given. For there are some, you know, those that were born so, can choose not to marry. But if not, it's not possible either. Which were so born from their mother's womb, and there are some, you know, which were made union you know, of men, and there be union you know, which have made themselves union you know, for the kingdom of heaven's sake. They have taken a vow of celibacy, not to get married. They can do so. Some were born that way. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. But those who cannot, then we are brought unto him, little children. Let's stop there. Let's stop with verse 12. This passage we have read is not your first time to have heard this read before. But what does that mean to you as an individual? That God originally from the beginning designed a marriage 
that it should be for life and not for time as people will have it today. In Malachi chapter 2. Malachi chapter 2. Talking about marriage as God's design. In Malachi chapter 2, I'm reading verses 14 which was 16. Malachi 2 verses 14. Yet ye say, Wherefore, because the Lord hath been, been witness between thee and the wife and thy wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. And did not he make one, yet had he the residue of the Spirit. And wherefore one, that he must seek a godly seed, therefore take he. From this passage, we are all called to take he to your spirit, and let none of the men deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. The same thing is applicable to women. Let not any woman deal treacherously with the husband of her youth. For the Lord, the God of Israel said that he hated putting away for one quiet violence with his garment, saith the Lord. Of woes, therefore take heed to yourself that ye deal not treacherously. Let's stop there. Marriage is a divine institution created by God Himself between physically matured and mentally stable men and women. I need to emphasize that. That marriage is not for those in high school, those who are still living in their parents' basement. No, marriage is not for them. Marriage is for those who are physically of age, matured, and mentally stable. If you marry someone who is physically of age, but spiritually and mentally unstable. It will be a thorn in your flesh. So to the young ones who are believing God, pray to get married. Pray that the man will be a man who is mentally stable. Again, it's not every man that is physically of age that is mentally stable. I read of a man, a married man, who will video his relationship with the wife and post it online. That man is not mentally stable. And women, you don't need such a man in your life. There are women also who are not mentally stable. They are mentally derailed. They have been influenced by another spirit. If you are deceived by their stature, if you are deceived by their dressing, and you get married to them, you will live in hell in life before hell in eternity. That will not be our portion. God is given marriage to meet our physical and emotional needs of man and to maintain purity. It is out of the institution of marriage that God ordained procreation. Marriage is meant to serve three purposes. One for purity. Two for pleasure. Man, we are created sexual beings 
and marriage is to fulfill that need. Marriage is meant for procreation. That by marriage, all the children will be given birth and life will continue. At the beginning, when God created man, he saw that it was not good for him, for man to be alone. Of all the creation of God, it was only man that was not good until God gave him a woman. You, know, you see sometimes, you see men and say, I don't want to marry, the trouble is too much. Well, that means you don't want to be good to follow up your lifetime. Because until you are married, you are not good. But the problem after that, that God has given man a woman, Satan came in. Satan is in hot pursuit of this institution and has found accomplice, another one, people to assist him in achieving his goal by destroying families. We are talking tonight on this afternoon, Christian marriage and godly family. We qualify the word Christian. Because if you are married to somebody who is not a Christian, you get into trouble all of your life. That's why when they came to the land, God told them, don't marry strangers. The people of the land, don't make marriages with them. Because if you do, they will turn your heart away from the true God. So I'm talking to those who are Christian. And who is a Christian? A Christian is not somebody who goes to church. I was in Catholic before, but now in deeper life. That does not make me a Christian. I belong to the other religion before, but now I go to church. That doesn't make one a Christian. Who then is a Christian? I don't wear earrings. I don't wear pines. I don't paint my mouth. I don't use lipstick. I don't use eyelashes. I don't use attachment. That doesn't make one a Christian either. So what make one a Christian? A Christian is one who has come to the end of himself and then has handled down the rest of himself to God. Like Paul says it, it is no longer I who live. The life I now live, I live by the grace of God who loves me. Now, a Christian is one at a day in his life. He came to his senses and he said, God, I am a sinner. Forgive me my sins. I believe that Jesus died in my stead. Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. Give me the power so that I will not sin again. If a man, whatever you may have done in life, if you make that decision sincerely from your heart, God forgives you your past sin. God gives you power to go and sin no more. That person is a Christian. If he is a woman, she's a Christian. If he's a man, he's a Christian. When that person gets married, how will she order her life and how will he order his life? as a married woman and as a married man. That's what we are considering today. So this message is for those who are making a decision to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So that the one will be scriptural perspective on marriage. What has the Bible to say about marriage? Now, you've been married for 30 years, 40 years, 20 years, as the case may be. But have you taken time to look at your life again as a husband or as a wife? Have I been ordering this family in accordance with the word of God? Or I am living this family as I saw in the love of my fathers, the love of my mothers. What has the scripture to say about Christian and godly family? Matthew chapter 19. Let's go back there. And see what Jesus Christ has to say about Christian marriage and godly family. Family that God is first, 
in all things. In Matthew 19, Rivers 3 to 6. The Pharisees came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every reason when he decides to do so? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they train shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. God's will for the family is for life. That nothing should come between you and your wife, between you and your husband. In other words, it's not what your parents tell you that you use to deal with your husband or with your wife. It's what God says to you. Genesis chapter 2. In Genesis chapter 2. We are reading Genesis chapter 2, verses 18. I read verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and have meat for him. In other words, as a woman, here is your position and help meat for him. The Pharisees were troubled students who were looking for every means and ways to justify and cover their hypocrisy. But Jesus spoke to them boldly and exposed them without missing words to them. He told them what the fact was, what is expected of them. The law of Moses allowed divorce and remarriage because the people were bent on doing mischief. Look at them for example. In Exodus 32, Exodus 32, in Exodus 32, look at these people. You will see them in verse 22. Exodus 32, I read verse 22. Exodus 32, 22. Here I read. We are told here in verse 22. And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord was hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. That was the tendency for Israel. Mischief. Whatever God said they should not do is what their heart was after. Deuteronomy chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 22. So what are we saying? We are saying that what Moses here said in the book of Deuteronomy 22, in verse 24, 22, let me read from verse 13 and 24. We are reading only verse 13 and 24. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her and give her occasion for speech against her, and bring up an evil name upon her, and say, I take this woman, and when I come into her, I find her not a maid. Then shall the father, that's a long story, let's read verse 24, verse 24. Then he shall bring them both out unto the gates of that city, and he shall stone them with stone, that they die. The damsel, because she cried not, let's stop them. The point I'm trying to make from this chapter is Moses allowed them divorcement because they were bent on mischief because they resisted Moses. Chapter 24, verses 1 to 3. You can read that on your own. Mark chapter 10, verses 2 to 12. You can read that on your own. But let's look at Matthew chapter 5. 
the mighty to the five. I read verse 31, Matthew 5, 31. We are talking about scriptural perspective on marriage. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 31 and 32, I read, It has been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. That is what you have heard from the Tell the evangelist today, from the so-called prophet today, that will prophesy to you and say your wife is a witch. God has told me to tell you that your wife, you should put her away and go and get another one from your village. Those are false prophets. Jesus is saying, you may have heard that, but I say unto you, that whosoever you know there are preachers today in the midst of their message they will tell you that my first one was like this was like this and we divorce so so years so so years and this one in which I am married to now will be married for so so number of years they may tell you that you may be sending your money to them to propagate that but Jesus is saying, verse 32, But I say unto you, So forget about what you have heard from others, that whosoever, the preacher, the parishioner, that whosoever shall put away his wife, save for the cause of fornication, cause her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committed adultery. That's the word of Jesus. And Jesus has a final say in all matter. Take note of that. The Lord of Moses allowed divorce and remarriage because the people were bent on mischief. Those who do not keep to the perfect will of God will face the wrath of God at the end of life. You may have said, well, I came to the pastor and he approved it. Well, the pastor at the end of life, two of you will not die the same day. The pastor has no heaven to give you. So, he may have assured you, I prayed about it. God said, you can go ahead, come and I will wed you with your second wife. With the one with the divorced woman. But I tell you from the word of God, from the beginning it was not so. And those say so, they're deceiving you. You know, they may tell you what, but there are some situations. I don't know about such situation. But this is what the word of God says. The Bible teaches very clearly that marriage is meant to meet specific need, as we have said before. And marriage is for life. We have talked about the purpose of marriage is for purity, is for pleasure, is for procreation. The world over the years, in different ways, sought to annul the perfect plan of God for marriage. The world all over. Today, I'm trying to change the role of the man and the role of the woman. Of course, as it was in the beginning, immediately God gave them the garden to rule over. Satan came in and robbed them of that garden, of that beautiful place. And as Jesus will soon come to establish the perfect peace on earth, the family again is the number one target of the enemy. This leads me to subheading two: Satan's onslaught against Christian marriages. Simply means Satan's attack against Christian marriages. If there is anything that the devil is fighting against today, it is the home. Because the devil knows that 
in the family is what it ought to be according to God's plan. The church will be what it ought to be. In the family is what it ought to be. In the society, the nation will be what it ought to be in God's plan. So if Satan wants to destroy a church, it starts from the family. Because it is a family that makes up the church. If Satan wants to destroy a nation, Satan starts from the home. If Satan conquers the home, Satan has conquered the nation. Look at people of my color. What goes on in our community today is the cause of what is going on in our families. And that's why, as a church and as believers, we must stand against the devices of the enemy in our families and in our lives. You know that you as a man, you are not an instrument to destroy your own family. That you are not yielding yourself to be used of the enemy against your wife and against your children. So also you as a woman, you are not yielding yourself like Eve did to the enemy to be used against your own husband and against your own children. I will not be instrument in the hand of the enemy. You will not be instrument in the hand of the enemy. Amen. Talking about Satan attack against Christian family. In the book of Romans chapter 1, we want to look at some ways where Satan is making inroad into the family, thereby destroying the original plan of God for the family. Romans chapter 1, I read verses 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness? Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it unto them. For the invisible thing of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Now see what the enemy have done. And changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image. Made like corruptible man, and to bed, and to four-footed beast, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the loss of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Verse 25. Who change the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forevermore. And we just say, Amen. For this cause, God give them up to buy affection. For even their own women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. You know, as we are coming to church this morning, I sometimes like to list the morning news and prayer news. And then the news was talking about a transgender man who has not changed to become a woman, but he still wants to be called Mister. You see, you can see the, 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 the corruption and the confusion. 
know what the Bible is talking about here. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affection, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, born in their lust one towards another, men with men. I don't know whether the gay community in this nation, whether they have the Bible, Anyway, they have changed this word now. They use modern English now to remove men with men. In fact, churches now are proving it. Presbyterian just did this year. And all that's a good, you know, I sometimes when we try to we're trying to get a place, and so we're trying to see if we have the fire here, we move to another place. Depending on where we see a place to buy. I think that was at the time. I went to one of the pastors in a nearby church. And I said, This is, we are trying to look for a place to be used for our worship. The pastor was a woman. Initially, she agreed. She said, I should come to their service to see how they do their things. So I went. And after the service, as another time, said we are you know, still, but they were after seven, they normally have fellowship. They have eating, taking coffee and all that. So I said, somebody called, a woman called her to the office and then she came back. And after she came, she they stayed for a while, and after she came back, she told me, he said that uh, she's thinking about what she had been with me before. That she knew I'm from Africa, from Nigeria. And, uh, he, he, she knew I was stand against uh, same sex people. I say yes. He said in our church, I forgot the percentage of them who are same sex. That you know, here they have comfort here, so here they take them as their church home. So if you are here, you don't have to. Would you accept them? I said, can I talk to them? <laughs> I said, well, I will preach to them. I will drive them, but I will preach to them. What I'm trying to say from here is this. Even in many churches today, because the percentage of those who are same sex are more than those who are couples, the natural and normal couples, you will shadow those who are normal married people. So those who are normal married people, they don't have the say in the churches. Those who are normal married people, people who are the same. That's what the confusion of the devil has caused in the society today. Not only that, I have to say this sometime. You know, I went to a flea market sometime ago, more than five years now. And uh, I saw the store, it said adult only. You know, human beings have a tendency to be inquisitive. Adult only, they are matters. I went in. You see, when I came out, I, to me, I said, the judgment of God 